Hey everybody, it's Nick. I wanted to do a quick video to show you what kind of rocks to avoid when you're tumbling and kind of how to pair your rocks up. So as you can say, see for right now, most of these are pretty dull, not super exciting. Um, but this is why, you know, I like to look for rocks when it's raining because once you get those things wet, um, you start seeing a lot of colors and patterns and banding that doesn't show up, um, you know, when they're dry. So you get a lot better idea of what they're actually going to look like when you tumble them. But one thing, um, you know, we've come across is trying to make sure that you're putting the same rocks in together with the same kind of hardness. And one way to do that is with the nail. A nail is kind of a good dividing line, a good solid steel hardened nail. Um, I believe that puts you at around seven on the Mohs hardness scale. So basically, if it will scratch this, you kind of want to set it aside and put it in its batch with other stuff that it will scratch. So I've tried to scratch that and I've actually got, you know, silver that's come off of the nail. So that means that the hardness of that is harder than the nail. If it was reversed, I'd have powder on the tip of the nail and there wouldn't be, and there would actually be a gouge in the rock itself. Um, so basically, you know, I'll go through and if I'm not quite sure, I'll just come in, try and give it a little scratch. See, I don't have a scratch on either. So that's going to mean basically that it's the same hardness. So that's still a pretty hard rock. Here we have an example of a rock that was softer than the nail. So this here is the gouge that I made with this. And besides it being softer than the nail, it's just a really porous, uh, sedimentary kind of rock. And that is just not really going to polish anyways. It just gets gritty and the, and the surface never will really smooth. You got a lot of little tiny pores that will trap grit. So that one right there, I think is going to be a flower bed uh, rock. Now this piece we found was a really nice piece of obsidian. You're not going to want to tumble that because it will actually cleave right, you know, fracture really easily. So it'll smack against other rocks. So if you were to try and tumble that with other rocks, you would just get a bunch of busted shards, which would actually kind of look like this. And I'm pretty sure that this here is graphite that I found that we tried to send home and it did not make it. It just, just rattling around with other rocks, it completely just shattered. I've heard do not tumble granite and I've never tried, but we're gonna try and tumble it just for fun because we found a bunch of it and I like the pink in there. So we'll see what happens and show it later. You see these pretty often. You get the uh, kind of harder material speckles and then there's a softer material mixed with it. So you just get really bad undercutting like this one. You can see it's getting pretty shiny in a couple spots. And then that's got that really dull white around it. So when we see these, we just like there's a really shiny side, but everything else is poopy. So we just uh, kind of pull these out, throw them in the planter bed, call it a day. But our, on the bright side, our planter bed's starting to get some really cool looking <laughs> round rocks in it. So, hey, not a total loss. And another thing you're definitely not going to want to tumble is going to be stuff like this. As porous as that is, I mean, all it's going to do is load with grit. You're never going to get a shiny, smooth, uh, rounded rock with a tumbler. You may be able to use a slab saw and cut it and use a cabbing machine to maybe polish something that looks cool, but you definitely don't want to try and tumble this. Um, you can see that this thing has a lot of little tiny cracks all around it. And the reason I kind of try and avoid these is because what happens is you get something like this where you get, you know, a part that does look amazing. And then all of those cracks 
will fill in with the polish. You get a 90% great looking rock and then 10% bleh. This is another really good example of cracks that you'll see right down the middle here. Um, those are the kind that are gonna fill in. But you can see those cracks, how they filled in with the polish or they just kind of stand out. So if you don't mind, then you're great. But if you are looking for a perfect smooth stone, you're gonna kind of want to avoid anything that you can see those kind of hairline cracks. This one here is a prime example of one that'll probably never turn out nice just because it has this one crack all the way through the center. And then it's also got a really big hole that'll never smooth out unless we were to grind that out. A uh, good example of kind of what happens with those would be this guy where it's super shiny, looks great. And that is still there, always will be. So it doesn't matter, I can polish this thing all day, all night for a year straight and it will disintegrate before that hole disappears. Another thing that can be frustrating when you're trying to tumble is a ridge that it's either gonna have to wear down or in this ridge right here, that's not actually gonna polish because it's not flat enough for anything to rub in there and smooth it out. This is an example. This is a rock that we've been tumbling for ever. Um, it's been in there just rolling and rolling and rolling and this high ridge here is still there and these lower ridges are still not smooth. And we just keep polishing it just cause we're curious how long it'll take to finally smooth out and what it'll look like when it's done. Cause it does look like it will have some really cool patterns and coloring when it's done. You can see once you wet it down, that gives you a better idea of when you're done polishing it, you know, what to expect. But that bump right there is kind of what you're gonna expect if you were to throw this in the tumbler as is. So all of your edges are gonna, you know, smooth out pretty quick. All these sharp edges will get smoothed out. And this is gonna be a pretty rock when it's done, but we've gotta wear all of these holes in and we've got to wear this thing down before it really starts smoothing out. So what you can do is you got a couple options is you, if you have a saw, you can cut, you know, the part off. Like I would cut basically this whole chunk because you can see all it is is holes and a big ridge. So if I was to get rid of that and just cut straight across there, it would really cut down on the time that it would take to polish this. And then all I would have to worry about is this nice, smoother surface with no cracks except for minor one right here which you could try and chip off ahead of time or grind it down um, but that's going to be something that's going to take a really long time to get rid of well i've had a couple comments about how people don't have rocks like what they've seen us polish um, and all I can say is, you know, I think pretty much everybody's got good rocks to polish close by. I mean, rocks might not be a specific kind and some are rarer than others, but for the most part, anybody can find, you know, some rocks to polish. And living in Florida, we have to use landscaping rocks, basically. Um, you know, so you got to spend some time looking for them. The best time I've found is like right now where it just stopped raining and everything's wet. And it really brings out the colors and patterns. You can see a little more depth in some of the rocks, you know. And uh, it just got to spend a little bit of time actually looking around and, and seeing. And really, you just got to be willing to throw it in your tumbler and see what happens. I mean, a lot of them that we do are a mystery until we throw them in and you know we may get done and check stage one and chuck a couple of them and keep some other ones going um but it's just kind of looking to see what you can find and giving it a shot so next time you're 
driving by a business and you see they got a big bunch of rocks outside, just go check them out. Chuck a couple in a tumbler and see what happens. It's worked out really well for us. That's about it.